What happened in this period of around the 16th century that made wisdom of Kabbalah able to be opened? We've often seen this diagram of development of desires. If you're not new to Kabbalah, if you've seen a few introductory materials, so you'll see that uh, desires develop all throughout history and our era, our era is very unique in that the desire has reached its overblown point, its satiation point where the desire for spirituality has, has started ripening in humanity and many people start feeling this attraction to something beyond this world, something beyond all those previous levels of desire which can be roughly summarized as food, sex, family, money, honor, control, knowledge. However, we often say that there's this difference between the desire for knowledge and the desire for spirituality. Right? That we have uh, the smaller desires for food, sex, family, then, then the desire grows and there's a desire for money, and then uh, we go through these desires for honor, control, knowledge, and then spirituality. 16th century is unique because what actually we see here, what, why, did they, why did the Kabbalists say from that specific time? If we think about what's happening in the world in the 16th century, that's the period commonly known as the Renaissance period. You have the printing press coming out just before that. Uh, so that obviously made, you know, reading and writing and, and, and working with texts much more common than what it had been before that. You could say there was a long period where many people were, were very ignorant of, of what was going on and suddenly critique and, and getting involved in, in text became, became a big thing. So that, that, was a, that was a major invention of the period. And you see this leap into what we generally think of as the, into the desire for knowledge at that time. What, what's unique here is that the desire for knowledge and the desire for spirituality are really the same desire, only the two sides of it. You could say that the desire for spirituality is the, what we call the point in the heart, the, the sincere desire for, for spirituality emerging, meaning that that's a desire that comes up more in our era where we feel this earnest unfulfillment in all the previous levels of desires and we want some attraction to what is beyond this world. Desire for knowledge is more uh, the same desire but which emerges still connected to the lower levels, to connected to the egoistic desires and that's what emerges around that period in the 16th century. Just think of all these people that emerged in this time and, 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 the, and, the, and the teachings that emerged. Science became uh, much greater, the arts, culture, you have people like uh, Copernicus and explorers like Columbus and you have Da Vinci and Michelangelo, all these artists uh, emerging in this period. When you compare that to the whole Dark Ages and Middle Ages before that, it's, it's really some like, major advances in terms of what was happening in humanity. You know, a little bit afterwards you have uh, Descartes, this uh, you know, philosophy starts becoming uh, a major thing. So there's this there's this thriving atmosphere that's emerging mostly in Europe in this time and it's this expression of this new desire that's emerging. Also in this time in Kabbalah you have the Kabbalist the Ari emerging who is referred to as the major turning point in the wisdom of Kabbalah in terms of preparing the wisdom for our era. The Ari who is Kabbalist Isaac Luria prepared the wisdom of Kabbalah in he, he revived that scientific language of Kabbalah that Abraham once used in his Sefer Yetzirah, the book of creation, and he expanded on it. And if you really get to the core of what is this new desire that was emerging in humanity at that time and what led the Ari to upgrade the wisdom of Kabbalah in a new language, meaning that the attainments are still the same attainments, but the communication of those attainments is uh, became upgraded to be much more scientific, much more precise, you know, pointing to specific spiritual objects, spiritual processes and spiritual phenomena that are, that are happening and structures, you know, whereas before, you know, previous language such as that of, of the Torah and the Tanakh and the Midrash, it was, you could say it was a lot more hazy in, in, its, in, its, in, in its communication. So it came out specifically in this period and you can see it with what's happening in the world as this uh, fulfillment for this new desire which demands proof where previously no proof was really demanded the people could get by with those previous languages uh, because it gave a certain sensation and it provided a path to the upper world for those 
who studied it in secret and had the proper teachers and the access to it. But from the period of the Ari onwards, he upgraded the communication of the wisdom of Kabbalah to cater to this new desire, uh, which demanded proof. And, and, the, and the scientific approach became much more uh, in demand uh, in terms of Kabbalah. And, and later, Bala Sulam in the 20th century further uh, interpreted the, the works of the Ari and gave people just in this world access to be able to uh, to, to, to get to the wisdom of Kabbalah and, and he and also the book of Zohar point to the end of the 20th century and mainly the 21st century as being the time when the wisdom of Kabbalah would become expanded to the masses, to humanity because the desire that started popping up in the 16th century and developed from then uh, till this time would reach a new threshold which is called you know, the emergence of the point in the heart, the, the desire for spirituality, which is expressed by questions such as what is the meaning of life, why am I here, what is reality, all the existential questions that are within us, they are the ones that Kabbalists for, you know, since the beginning of time had, had, had known that this wisdom is made for supplying that specific desire, those existential questions for getting their fulfillment. And the, their fulfillment, the, the purpose of the wisdom of Kabbalah is to bring the, those desires to uh, their full completion, which is the revelation of their connection as a soul, which is in connection with the Creator, the revelation of the Creator to us created beings while we're alive in this world, uh, to really get those answers in a, in a clear perception and sensation while we're alive in this world.